Hey guys, welcome back to another Final Cut Pro tutorial and today we're learning all about how to color correct and color grade our footage. So we're gonna start with beginner and move all the way up to intermediate advanced. I'm no colorist, but I'm gonna tell you the workflow that I follow. So we're gonna first start with our correction and fixing the colors and exposure in our clips. Then moving on to unique situations like we're underwater or when the drone is panning and the exposures or colors are changing. And finally, we're gonna finish off with color grading and giving our footage a look and a final result, something that we are happy with. So let's get into it. All right, here is our editor. It is completely empty except for some footage on the side. First thing we wanna do when it comes to color grading is open up our preferences and select here, like I already have selected, color wheels. We don't wanna use color board as it doesn't give us so much, as much freedom as color wheels, so select that. All right, next we're gonna drag a clip into the timeline. For example, this clip here of Iceland. Now we wanna start correcting this footage. So we're gonna to go to view, look at video scopes, and here are the two scopes that I always select. I have the vector scope and I have RGB overlay. And the way you can change that is by selecting them on the side here. Also here, by clicking view, you get to select two, one, three, or something like this. But I always select just these two. All right, let's get a better look at this in a bigger screen. What you wanna do is bring these colors you can see here, you wanna try and bring them together. And we do that over here in the color wheels. So let me briefly explain. On the right side of the color wheel, we have exposure, and that's on the master wheel, that's the whole image. On the left side, we have saturation, up and down. And down at the bottom, we have white balance. On the right side, we warm up the photo. On the left, we cool it down, or the video, sorry. And the bottom is the magenta and greens on the opposite sides of the color wheel. So let's go back to the master, and if you notice on the other sides of the wheel, we have orange. And the opposite of teal, so if we have yellow, then we have blue. And on the other side, we have magenta and green. And notice how that affects the RGB overlay on the left side here. The more saturated the color, the higher it will be in the chart. And the other wheels on the chart, such as midtones, shadows, and highlights, are for more control within our adjustments. All right, let's get started and color correct this footage, starting with the white balance. So by sliding it to the right, you can see the colors come together. So that pulls a bit of the blues out. So as you can see, the reds are still lower than the other ones. So we can try and add reds in the highlights to raise them up. There we go. Now you can see they're completely aligned. So let's toggle that on and off to see the differences. You can see the clip was a little bit blue before, and now it looks a little bit better colored. With the white here is the luminosity, or the luma, and you wanna bring this, this line here all the way up to close to 100 and the bottom down to zero. Usually you wanna start with that, so we'll bring down shadows. The minute you touch the line, that means you've lost information in the shadows and that's called crushing the blacks. And then we wanna raise the highlights all the way up close to 100. Sometimes you can go over. If you want that look, it's fine. For example, there's no information in the sky, but if you like that look, that's fine. So we'll bring them just to 100. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of darkness here. So I'm gonna raise the mid-tones that brings the detail back into the shot. Sometimes when you raise the mid-tone too high, you can bring down the shadows again. All right, that shot looks better. Let's toggle it on and off. So that right there is corrected footage. Let's move on to another clip. As you can see in this shot, it's a bit pink in these mountains. So we wanna correct this by pulling the magenta out of this tint. As you can see right away, it's looking better by adding green. Second of all, we can bring down the shadows right down to the bottom. We can raise the highlights a bit, but as you can see, we've got a bit of green peeking over here in our highlights. So we can pull highlights away from green because that is the opposite on the side on the color wheel. Let's pull highlights away from green. You see what's happening? But that brought more pink into the photo. We can desaturate the highlights to get rid of some of that pink. All right, let's bring mid-tones down, get them down. We're losing detail in this waterfall at the top here. So we've got to bring those highlights down a bit there. Still a little too much pink overall in the photo, so I'm going to pull the mid-tones away from pink. There we go. So now we've fixed that problem of the greens and the highlights, and we've balanced the color a little bit better. Let's look before and after. So as you can see, it was pink here. The image was a bit flat. It looks much better now. Let's try another clip, and let's say we're using this interview footage. 
Whenever you're using interview footage, you always want to start by making a compound clip. Interview one. Because when you have this interview, let's say you're cutting it up and you're fixing all of the errors in the interview, if you're, then you pull that out. So let's say I want to fix this clip right here and I want it to affect all of my pieces. I just double click and now I fix this. Bring the shadows down, raise the masters. That way when I go back into the clip, that's affected all of them together. All right, next we'll look at some log footage. Here we have two clips. One is a little bit blue and one is a little bit orange. So as you can see here, we've got the blue in the highlights and we need to correct that. So right away we can pull some orange into the clip and all of a sudden you see our colors are lining up. We got to put more reds into the highlights and as you can see they're lining up. And we will bring the shadows down, bring the, all the midtones up to get more light in the shot, highlights up. We've got a bit of clipping here, so maybe we won't go too high. Shadows down. Okay, let's look at a really orange shot. So the white balance was off on the camera here. Made a mistake, if you wanna correct for that, we have way too much red. So let's bring blue back into the shot. As you can see, the red is coming down. And we're in the mid-tone area. Let's pull away from red. Or we can do the whole thing. Pull away from red, add some more blue to the shot. And now let's contrast. Bring the mid-tones up. Still a little bit too much red. Let's pull away from magenta. Add some green. There we go. Let's, that looks a bit corrected. Much better. So as you can see, there's some clipping here, but that's no problem. That's just the light in the windows. That's no worries. So that clip looks much better. Let's look at another shot here where we have the, the white balance is way off. If we have a scenario like this and we want to match these grades, we just copy, control C, and over here, shift control V, and that will add the attributes. So there we go, color wheel, add. And all of a sudden, we have matching clips. So we've shared our color, color correction onto the other clip. Excuse the background noise, that's my Mac humming to try and keep up with the screen recording here. Next, let's look at two unique scenarios. So one is underwater footage. Look at the difference in the color here. So every time we shoot underwater, we lose the reds. So we have to bring back the reds in the shot because it's definitely blue dominant. So right away, let's add some magenta. Let's add red into the midtones. With this, you kind of got to play around with it to try and get the best looking image. So we we'll bring, we can bring the shadows down to the bottom. You can raise it up a little bit. Highlights can go up a bit. We're gonna lose some, but that's okay. Let's bring more red into the shot. Raise that red up. Bring the, that down. We don't wanna lose too much blue because of course we are underwater after all, so we don't want this color to be red or green. We want, still want it to be blue. However, look at the detail we brought back into the subjects. Look at how much contrast and color are back, natural color are back. We can make this more saturated. We just boost these colors, and that way we can still hold on to the blue. So next we have a drone shot. What happens when the drone pans down is it's too dark. Right as we hit here, we want to put in a keyframe right here. We want to go to the middle of our clip, and that's where we want to fade on some more exposure here and here. And now watch our clip adjust as it pans down. So it's panning down and it adjusts. All right, so these clips that you see here I've actually got from Storyblocks, which is the sponsor of today's video. Storyblocks has one million royalty-free assets. I've been using this service for two years now and it's awesome. It's an affordable subscription with unlimited downloads. It's a big time saver. For example, sometimes I'm editing winter footage in the wrong season. I'm in a hot place. Storyblocks comes to the rescue and I can 
get some snow footage or whatever I need to fill in that spot. If I'm in a different country and I am missing some B-roll of that country, Storyblocks has footage from all over the world, which is amazing. You can just get back to editing and finishing more projects. If you're interested in using Storyblocks, check the link in my description for more. All right, so here we are to the last portion of the video and that is the grading portion of the video, giving it its final look. So what we do here, I have some clips from Iceland. I'm going to drag over an adjustment layer so I can apply the look to all of the clips. Now this only works after we've color corrected all the clips. You can't just slap on a LUT or a grade and expect it to fix all of your clips. We have to color correct, then we can put on our look and it can apply to all the clips. If you don't have an adjustment layer in your Final Cut already, link is in the description where you can download a free one. So here we can adjust the colors of our clips. Let's say we wanna bring our shadows into this range here and maybe our mid-tones we wanna make more orange. Let's say we wanna make the master more colorful. So here's where we can get a bit more technical. We can bring in our color curves. We can, if you want, you can bring more contrast into the image by doing a slight S curve. If you want more of a hazy, moody, summertime vibe, you can add some fade to it. That could, that might be a look that you want for some films, not typically travel too much. Bring that back. Now we're gonna go to hue saturation curve. This is where we can get really technical with the various colors. So let's say we're adding just this single clip and we have a hue saturation curve. We will select the hue by clicking on that. Let's say we want the yellow and now we can adjust the color of the grass. So look more green, more orange. We're gonna do it to the whole adjustment layer. So let's go greens, let's bring them more no, we want to adjust like this. So the yellowish greens, we want to bring them into the more of a bit more orange range. And then whenever you're looking at a color grade, you want to look at the opposite side. Let's look at this color here. Click on it. There it is. And you can see I can make it more teal or make it more purple, depending on how you like. So that's where you have the freedom to work with the colors in the hue, saturation, and luma curves. Let's say we wanna adjust the brightness of the blues, we click on the eyedropper, we click over here, and we can bring up the brightness of the blues. All right, we have talked a lot about landscapes, now, look, now let's look at some portraits. So we have three portraits here, and that's where our vector scope comes into play. This line here, regardless of ethnicity, is the skin tone line. And you always wanna line up your luminosity and your color along that line. So this one's a bit too orange, needs to be a bit more along there. So that's properly corrected. Now let's say we wanna add a more of a grade to this. For example, let's say like a teal look and orange in the highlights. What I don't like about that is his beard has kind of gone aqua. Let's have a look. The way to fix that is we go to our hue saturation sliders, we put option, click. This is our luma line, so this is the shadows, this is the highlights. So if we pull that down, you can see that actually pulls the color out of his beard. See that? Because there's nothing worse than teal shadows all over a video. Just kidding, kind of. Okay, next one, we're gonna do color masking. So click over here, color mask, and we want to select your skin tone with the eyedropper tool, then view the mask. And we're gonna slide these HSL bars all the way until her skin tone is completely white. We wanna mask out her entire skin. So once we've successfully done that, then you're gonna click on view mask again to see the image. Select outside and we wanna change the color of the outside. When we adjust the master wheel, it's a bit aggressive. So let's reset that do the mid-tones, and as you can see, we're changing the background and the darker parts of the photo. So this is completely subjective. When you're creating looks, it's completely up to you. Lastly, I'm going to pull the color out of the shadows like I did last time, and there we go. I've completed it. Let's take a look at the before and after. Woo. So once you understand how the color wheels work a little bit, you can play around with the colors and pick a look that you like. However, if you'd want to try out the colors that I use in all of my travel videos, then just click the link in the description and you'll see my LUTs there for sale. And you're looking at four of the before and afters of four of my LUTs in my 
latest pack. They're super easy to add to your footage. You just type in LUT, add that custom LUT on top of your footage, go to the drop down menu, mark out some LUTs and pick one of them. And there, boom, done. If I provided you with some value, I'd appreciate it if you checked out that link. All right, that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you learned something in this color grading tutorial. Make sure you follow me over on Instagram. Give this video a like and subscribe if you aren't already and we'll catch you in the next one. So in this tutorial, um, our, so with underwatch and and today, to another, that I.